So I had pretty big plans for this morning. I was going to film a segment on a candle and uh, it required me to get up very early in the morning, which I did, to get on out and uh, wait for the sunrise, which I did. But I needed a very clean, pretty springtime uh, sky. And as you can clearly see, that's not what I have. I've been battling with dark clouds, rain, cold temperatures, and I officially decided to quit. But then after careful consideration and uh, several of these, I said to myself, you know what? Goonies never say die. All right, so plan B didn't work. I went to a state park and I got to the main gate and they told me that they don't open until 9.30. What world are they living in? It's a park. Going on to plan C now, I found a meadow. Uh, we'll find a nice big open space that will look gorgeous. To review early sunrise, I got it right here in my pocket. Oh, uh, this is totally gonna work. What do they call this stuff? The thicket? I don't know. I thought this was just gonna be grass. It actually kind of really hurts. Ah! Ah. Uh. I can't even see where I came from. This is about 15 feet tall now. This was uh, not a good idea at all. This was just wrong. Oh, this hurts! This isn't grass! This is the problem with not having a producer. There's no one that you can get mad at. I'm the producer. I produced this situation. I just got a rampage. Come on. Oh, I see grass. This is a swamp. It's very wet. Oh, now my socks are wet. That didn't work. That was a huge slip and fall. There was maybe about five minutes where I was not frightened for my life. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's been one crazy morning so far. I've been in apple orchards, at high elevations, state parks, deep swamp-like terrain. I am filthy uh, from dirt and mud. My hair, I just simply look like a madman. I'm sorry, this is just what it's gonna be like. So why am I here today? Well, I came out, just to recap, I came out today to review a candle that I really enjoy. It's called Early Sunrise by Yankee Candle. I've had this in my collection for quite some time. In fact, this is a 2014 pour. A gem if you ask me and if you take a close look at the photograph of this label you'll see that we're looking at grapevines vineyards wine country and if you know a little bit about my background I lived in Napa Valley for a bunch of years and right over the mountain from Napa Valley is Sonoma County and that's what this photograph always reminded me of and you know what I, I wouldn't doubt for a second that this is where uh, they took the photo. Even looking at the, the, the horizon, seeing the fog, it looks just like being in Sonoma, seeing that kind of blanket of fog that comes up from San Francisco every morning. Let's give this a sniff. Okay, yeah, so right off the bat, coastal breeze, coastal air. That's what this reminds me of. I mentioned San Francisco and I mentioned Sonoma. Sonoma, the whole county, the whole region is right on the coast. But not only that, 
that northbound oceanic breeze that comes in through the Golden Gate Bridge rushes up into uh, the wine regions in Northern California. So not only are you getting that blast of oceanic breeze from uh, San Francisco, but you're also getting the direct coastal influence. And why am I saying coastal? Because I'm getting that salty saline sea breeze air. Salty, but way more than that salt, we're getting lemon or citrus, but mainly lemon. So the strength, the power of this citrus is going to be in the form of lemon extract. But there's a sourness here. There's a tartness here. So think of bergamot. Think of when you smell sour candies like citric acid. That's what happens when you include bergamot. And that's what's going on here. But there's a sweetness too. There is a sweetness. So think of lemon head candies. They're not so much tart as they are sweet. And we can even say Fruit Loop breakfast cereal, the lemon little loops. And with the strength of that lemon, this is also going to have what I call the clean factor. You know, for me, it's reminiscent of like cleaning supplies. So not only is this smelling delicious, but it also has that clean side. It's gonna make your living space smell fresh. Underripe lemon or a little bit of a lime thing happening. I wouldn't wanna leave lime out. So definitely a little lemon lime. Okay, so let's, let's dig a little deeper because there's more going on. There's always more going on. Underneath the citrus, underneath the salty saline, I'm getting peppercorn, like fresh, cracked, black peppercorn. It's a little sneezy, but in totally not a bad way. It just adds to the exotic nature to this candle. It evokes that ozone early morning feel. Let's talk about some of these herbal notes. Lemongrass, there is that definitive herbal green smell, a green tea accompanied with a big dollop of honey and some ginger, like you just grated or shaved or sliced some fresh ginger into that green tea. So this is where it gets really interesting. Far off into the distance, I'm picking up on an expired campfire. What I mean by that is imagine you're out one night with your family and friends, you're having a campfire, you uh, sleep in your tents and you wake up the next morning and you look at the remnants of the fire from the night before. It's just that white ashy material. Or we could also say incense. Now I'm not talking about the fragrance of incense. I'm talking about the actual wooden sticks. You know, if you've ever been to a Pink Floyd cover band show or a Grateful Dead cover band show, you know what I'm talking about, right? So why is that there? It, it racked my brain for a little bit and then it suddenly just made sense. And I love when this happens, when I start to formulate the concept, the art of the fragrance at hand. So let's break this down. We started with lemon. Then we ventured into things like lemongrass and green tea, a dollop of honey, some sliced fresh ginger. You see where I'm going with this? And now we have this smoky, ashy wood smell. Almost like you would find in an oak aged whiskey oak aged whiskey so wait a minute it's kind of like a hot toddy right you're getting this very familiar ozone like aroma but it's also making the connection of that beverage i drink hot toddies all the time i usually skip the whiskey part it's one of my favorite beverages so we have two concepts that are in the same theme early morning playing in harmony there's a synergy between these two ideas and it's just strengthening the theme of this candle. How cool is that? I do want to mention that I burned this last night, and even though it is several years old, 
It burned very nicely. This is not going to be a loud mouth candle that's gonna fill up your whole home, but uh, certainly does the job for me. Early sunrise, you know what? If you enjoyed the descriptors I shared, I would put in a little effort to try to find this one. It's not on the website anymore, but uh, I'm sure if you visited enough outlets, you'd find it, or if you just simply go on Amazon or eBay, you'd find reputable sellers who would have this available. If you're into the candles that can scream complexity, but at really low volumes, if you're into that sort of thing, this is a, a candle that I think you, you really would enjoy, especially if you're a wine country lover, especially maritime wines. So I want to thank you for joining me today as I battled to get this segment in the can. Uh, I finally finished this all up. All right, so signing out. Thanks for joining me once again. We'll see you guys real soon.